In this module, we are going to discuss in depth about one of the most important topic at high frequency wave propagation called as skin depth or sometimes called as skin effect. Okay. Skin effect accounts for all type of major losses in a metallic surface, a metallic conduct, I mean metallic uh, wave guide or uh, uh, an antenna which is made up of a metal, but it is driven by some currents at high frequency, there will be loss in because of uh, in the metals because of the skin effect. So, understanding skin effect or skin depth is very important if you want to characterize how much loss you are actually able, I mean how much loss you are getting in the metallic materials. Okay. So, almost all metals exhibit skin effect in summary or in, in a kind of a overview kind of thing if I want to tell you in one or two sentences what skin effect is, it simply tells us that at high frequencies when a wave actually falls on a metallic surface, then the wave will not propagate completely inside, it will lie on a small layer called as skin depth layer and almost all of the currents and the waves are actually concentrated in that small layer. right? Why is that important? Consider a power cable that you are using to transmit power or high voltage from one point to another point. Okay. Although this is not the high frequency effect, the effect is essentially the same because of the lengths that are involved. Okay. What happens is that the entire electromagnetic energy is concentrated on this very small surface okay. and this surface of this thickness is actually called as the skin effect. Okay. So, the entire electromagnetic field is actually concentrated on this outer or just slightly inner conductor and only in this particular region. Okay. This width is called skin depth, almost all the current is concentrated in this skin depth. So, if you were to actually take a copper cable and consider a certain radius of the copper cable, then what you see is that the only usable area of this copper cable is around this skin depth okay? and all the other areas of the copper that you have used is actually not carrying any current at all. Okay? This is especially true at high frequencies. So, what is the job of this extra copper? The extra copper is only giving you mechanical stability. So, if you want to actually have a trade off between how much mechanical stability you want versus how much copper you use because you know that the electromagnetic fields are all concentrated on the skin depth on the outer to inner layer of the copper. So, it is the question as to how much copper can you actually afford to waste. Okay. You can make a mile long or a mile diameter uh, uniform copper rod to carry electromagnetic energy, but that would be totally useless because the electric fields would only be around a small region and we will just very quickly estimate what is the order of magnitude of that one here and that order of magnitude you will be surprised to see the value out there. So, in that small region is what the entire electromagnetic waves are concentrated on. Therefore, it does not make sense to use so much of copper to fill in between except if you are looking for mechanical stability. All right. With this thing in mind, let us try to see what this skin depth is. Okay. Now, we have already encountered what skin depth is. right? So, we have already written down an expression for skin depth and we denoted that one by a Greek letter delta. Okay? This was supposed to represent your skin depth and it is given by pi f mu sigma. Okay? For a copper, sigma is in the order of 10 to the power 7 per ohm meter and mu is equal to 10 to the power minus 7 Henry per meter. This is for the case of mu is equal to mu 0 which is what we are going to assume and if you substitute these values of for mu and sigma, the actual sigma is around 5.9 into 10 to the power 7 or something. So, if you substitute all these values, you will get delta to be around 0 0.067 divided by square root of f, where f is the frequency measured in hertz. Okay. So, you can actually plot this okay, in the form of frequency along the horizontal axis and the skin depth in micrometers along the vertical axis. Okay. And you can employ rather than talking in terms of linear scale for f, you can employ a log scale. Okay. I have about 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 10, 10 to the power 11 and what you will see is that at frequencies which are close to kilohertz or less, 
the skin depth is around 1000 microns. Okay. A 1000 micrometer is nothing but 1 millimeter, right. So, this is about 1 millimeter thick even at frequencies as low as 1 kilohertz. Okay. This value this drops down to about 0.1 micron at around 1 gigahertz okay, or rather at around 10 to the power 11. So, at 1 gigahertz you are very close to 1 micrometer. So, this is the skin depth that you are looking for copper at a frequency of 1 gigahertz. So, if you were to build up your PCB with a and populate it with gigahertz sources, then this is essentially the region or the thickness of the copper that is being penetrated because of the skin depth. Okay. Even though this currents are concentrated in this very small region, the kind of losses they induce cannot be neglected. Okay. So, the, even though they might be propagating only in a short layer around the uh, conductor, you cannot actually ignore the losses of uh, because of this one. We will going to come back to this losses in a short while. Okay. So, let us look at certain equations which will describe skin effect for us. Okay. To describe skin effect, I actually need to write an equation for current density vector j. Okay. To write an equation for current density vector, I actually start from an equation which I have for electric field which is del square E is equal to j omega mu sigma plus j omega epsilon into E. Okay. And because this is a good conductor, skin effect is observed in those good conductors, sigma is very large compared to omega epsilon. Therefore, you have del square E is equal to j omega mu sigma into E. Let us assume that I have a metallic surface. Okay. This is air from which I have some wave coming in okay. and then there is a region that is a sufficiently thick metal is kept and then the waves are actually coming and impinging on this metal surface. Okay. So, once the waves come in and impinge on the metal surface, there will be assume that this wave is actually a plane wave. So, which means that it has x component for the electric field and y component for the magnetic field and the wave is propagating along z direction. What I am choosing in this particular coordinate system is to consider z less than 0 that is negative values of z to be metal and positive values of z to be air and then this is how the z axis is going. It is actually going from metal to air and the wave is going from air to metal. Okay. What will happen as the wave impinges there will be electric field lines right? and these electric field lines will be along x axis. Let us assume that the surface is kind of uniform along the x y plane. Therefore, their entire electric field lines will lie on x y plane and they would all be directed along x axis. Okay. They would be uniform at a given z equal to 0 plane and they would be pointing along x axis. Okay. However, as you go deeper into the metal, you will see that these lines of j vector actually start to become small and small. Okay. So, these are the electric field lines and the blue colors are the J lines. Okay. This electric field at the surface will induce a certain surface current density and this surface current density actually goes exponentially decays. Okay. So, this current exponentially decays inside that of a metal surface. Okay. And how do we describe that one? Well, for region Z greater than 0 that is for air the electric field is described by this wave equation. Okay. However, for z less than 0 where you have the wave converted in the form of the current density lines, this equation needs to be changed. So, for z less than 0 that is in the metal surface, I want an equation for j not for electric field. Okay. So, what is the relationship between the two? I know that E is given by j by sigma. So, I can substitute for that E. Okay. So, when I substitute for E, I get an equation for J as del square J is equal to J omega mu into J. But I already know that electric field was propagating originally along Z direction, it was polarized along X direction and since E and J are having the same polarization, I can replace this del square J by D square J X divided by D Z square. Right. This is obvious because electric field is along x, therefore, j must also be along 
x this is equal to j omega mu sigma j x ok. So, I converted this vector equation into a simpler scalar equation that tells us how the current density vector j x is actually changing or actually propagating as you go deeper into the metal surface. What is the solution for this one? The solution for this equation is very simple j x of z is equal to j x of 0 this is the value of the current density at the surface which will be given by the applied electric field E x of 0 right divided by sigma ok. And inside the metal this would be going as e to the power k z where k is square root of j omega mu sigma therefore, this would be 1 plus j z by delta ok. Now, you might be surprised why do I have a 1 plus j into z what happened to the minus sign and you should remember that this expression is actually valid for negative values of z. So, rest assured your j vector does not grow inside j vector actually decays right. So, you do not have a situation where at the surface you have a certain j vector whereas, at a certain later stage you have a j vector which is actually grown no 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 what you have is only wave which is I mean j vectors which is actually decaying exponentially ok and this decay rate is again given by that skin depth delta and the only thing is that this expression will have a plus sign out there ok. Associated with this j x of z and this j x of 0 there is also another quantity called current per unit width ok. What is this current per unit width? Imagine that I have this j lines which are going like this right. So, this is how the j field lines are all going this is the x direction which I am taking and then this j lines actually start to decay in amplitude and eventually reach to 0 down below. So, after a certain amount of depth they would actually be very very close to 0 right. So, this is how the electric field lines are all and then they would actually reduce reduce their amplitude and then go to very small values inside the good conductor. Now, what you do is you consider a integration right along y axis. So, my fingers are pointing along x axis ok this thumb is supposed to be pointing along the z axis and therefore, I have this direction to be the y axis ok. So, x y well the other way around so, ok the y axis should be coming out to me like this, but the point here is that I have x and I have y ok and if you look at an integration of these uh, j lines in this area which is given by this uh, say some meter 1 meter along y axis and then going all the way towards infinity along z coming back from infinity and coming up. So, you actually have a loop ok through which the j lines are all piercing out and then this loop has a width of 1 meter along y axis ok. So, in the y z plane consider integrating this j field to get so, integrate this j x of z to get what is the total current ok. So, this I am going to get as the total current, but so total current i ok. However, integration along y because j x is a function only of z therefore, integration along y gives you 1 meter and if you divide this integration along y what you get is current per unit width which is given by integral from minus infinity to 0 j x of z ok d z this will be a vector directed along y axis this is the current per unit width directed along y axis ok and this is given by integral from minus infinity to 0 this is j x of 0 e to the power 1 plus j into z by delta d z and when you integrate this one what you see is j x of 0 into delta divided by 1 plus j what is the meaning of this? The meaning is that the current per unit width is actually out of phase by 45 degrees with respect to the current in the surface right current on the surface j x of 0 is 45 degrees out of phase with the current per unit width ok. So, this is the meaning of this. So, I w is 45 degrees out of phase with respect to j x of 0 which is the current at surface of the conductor ok. So, this current per unit width I w which we have found out actually can be very useful for us ok because I w has units of ampere per meter ok. I w has units of ampere per meter ok. 
Now, if you look at this j x of 0 and relate it to the electric field. Okay. So, let me write down this one I w is given by j x of 0 into delta by 1 plus j. Okay. I know what is j x of 0, this is the surface current density at the surface of the conductor which must be equal to sigma times electric field component E x of 0. Right. So, substituting that what you get is I w is equal to sigma E x 0 divided by 1 plus j okay. and there is a delta out there. So, sigma delta by 1 plus j. Now, this quantity E x of 0 has units of voltage or volt per meter or volt per unit length and this fellow has units of ampere per meter right because this is current per unit width so if you take the ratio of voltage per unit width to current per unit width what you will get is something that would be impedance right so if you take this ratio of ex of 0 to iw what you get is 1 plus j divided by sigma into delta okay and this actually is a complex number R s plus j x s or I can write this as z s and call this as surface impedance. Okay. Surface impedance is actually telling you that electric field E at the surface to the current per unit width I w and this ratio is the surface impedance and clearly you can see that this ratio is not real that is it is complex indicating that E x of 0 and I w are out of phase by a certain factor. Okay. And because of this out of phase thing, the total power carried will not be exactly equal, only a part of the power will be carried by the wave and the rest of that power will actually be lost to us. So, this is what we wanted to write. There is the last matter of actually calculating how much power is getting lost. Okay. To calculate the power loss, first consider a scenario. Okay which we want to write down in terms of the voltage and the current right so this is my x axis okay so all the j lines are all being uniform right on this x axis of course along z they would actually be decaying and then i have a y axis up here okay now let's assume that this width is w okay and this length which i am considering is l okay so there is a width of w along y axis and a length L of the conducting surface that I am considering along x axis. What is the voltage that is induced in this length L? Voltage induced will be E x of 0 because this is at the surface I am considering times L. What would be the total current I passing through this width W? That would be I W into small w right that is the width here. So, current per width into width will be the total current. The ratio of V by I is given by E x of 0 L by W divided by I W right. Now, E x of 0 by I W is something that we have already written down this is nothing but Z s and then there is a factor of L by W. What happens when you consider L is equal to W? What you are really considering is that of a square okay, whose area is W square whose sides are W and W okay, and numerically V by I will then be equal to Z s. Because of this reason, this Z s is actually called as surface impedance okay, per square, right. Because when L is equal to W, the ratio of V by I Z s, which is in the form of ohms, will be numerically equal to the ratio of V by I. And this would happen only when L is equal to W, which is when you would actually have created a square. Therefore, if you call this Z s as impedance per square okay, or R s as resistance per square and X s as reactance per square, then multiplying by the square you are going to get the total impedance. Okay. So, this is what we wanted to write. Now, for the matter of the power that is lost, we know that the average power for complex V and I that is phasor quantities is given by half of real part of V I complex conjugate. right? Now, I know what is V, I know what is I. So, let me write down those expressions here. So, this becomes half real part of E x of 0 into L. right? I is nothing but I w complex conjugate, w complex conjugate. right? 
I know that L and W are real therefore, they can be pulled outside. So, I can write this as half area. So, area times real part of E x of 0 into I w complex conjugate, but I know that E x and I w are related to the surface impedance Z s. So, I will actually be able to write down two ways one would be to write this as E x of 0 and then write this I w square as E x complex conjugate of 0 divided by Z s complex conjugate. Okay or there is another form which is I will substitute for E x and write this as real part of I w into right I w because uh, this one and then into Z s there is an I w complex conjugate right. So, you can see that this form will give you half A right E x 0 E x 0 complex conjugate is real. So, you can pull this one outside. So, you get E x of mod 0 square and real part of 1 by Z s complex conjugate or equivalently you can write this as half A I w into I w magnet I mean complex conjugate is nothing but I w magnitude square and real part of Z s. Now, real part of Z s is nothing but R s therefore, this is given by half area I w magnitude square into R s this would be the average power, but if you are interested in power per unit area that would be obtained by dividing the average power with area. So, you get half I w magnitude square into R s. There is one last matter which I want to discuss in which I am going to relate this I w to the magnetic field. Okay. This expression will become very useful for me when I relate the current to the magnetic field, because then it will allow me to calculate the losses of waveguide walls, you know how much power is getting lost inside a waveguide wall you can also extend that analysis to any other metallic surface. Okay. So, what we want is now relationship between right I w which is current per unit width and magnetic field H. In order to get this one I will invoke Ampere Maxwell law. So, I have H dot d L being equal to integral of J dot d S and I know for this case that if I consider this one as say y axis this as z axis and this as my x axis. So, hopefully all the directions which I have written down are correct. Okay. So, on the surface if you look and form a path of integration okay, which is having h units okay, along y and having d unit along z where we are going to assume that d is much 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 larger than skin depth. So, that the fields here down in the metallic surface are actually almost 0 and we consider the path in this way okay. going along the segment 1, segment 2, segment 3 and segment 4. Now, this integral of j dot d s we have already written down. right? So, this is nothing but integral of j d z, j x d z and d y, right? but integral of j x d z is something that we have already written down. This is nothing but the current per unit width and times integral over d y will be this integral over h. So, this would be I w into h right h being the width along the y direction. What happens to the left hand side? Well, for the case of plane wave that we have considered h will only have y component and therefore, segments 2 and 4 will not contribute anything because in these con segments h is along y, but the line is line element or the line integral is along z. So, therefore, it would not contribute there is no contribution of h in the segment 3 also. Why? Because h would have decayed so much because of the skin effect thing the E values and h values at depths which are much larger than skin depth would actually be almost 0. Therefore, h contribution along segment 3 will be nothing. Therefore, the only contribution of h is that of the segment 1 at which point I have minus h y into small h is equal to I w h. Therefore, this gives me I w is equal to minus h y or if you consider a normal along the metal surface outside to the metal surface right. this can also be written as n hat. So, this normal if you consider then it can be written as n cross h. Okay. h is along y and n is along the surface z. So, you have z cross x that is what the direction for I w would be. Okay. So, regardless of the fact on the surface this h y is nothing but tangential component of 
magnetic field right. Therefore, what we have here is the current per unit width or the current on the metallic surface is actually equal to at least the magnitude of that one is equal to the tangential h component ok. You can now substitute this expression for I w into the power lost per unit area and obtain the power lost per unit area is half h t where h t stands for tangential magnetic field magnitude square times R s and R s is something that is determined by the material properties it is actually sigma dependent the conductivity dependent h t magnitude square is actually dependent on the magnetic field that is induced on the surface ok. So, this expression for power lost per unit area is very important and you should keep this expression in mind when we later discuss waveguide losses ok. There is one other concept associated with wave propagation inside that of a imperfect conductor or a dielectric. The question is how do you consider which one is a conductor, which one is a dielectric and this can be considered by considering the ratio of how much conduction current is there to the uh, to the displacement current ok. And this ratio of conduction to displacement current is actually captured by what is called as loss tangent ok. What is the total current inside that of a material when there is uh, a conduction as well as displacement current? You have conduction current given by sigma into E right and the displacement current is given by j omega epsilon E assuming that electric fields and all the other field quantities are going as E power j omega t. So, this is the conduction current, this is the displacement current you can actually plot them on the x and y axis. So, I can actually plot this one as, as the displacement current this will be given by j or in terms of j this would be omega epsilon and the magnitude of the conduction current I can plot here ok. This would be the conduction current which is given by sigma into E ok and then the total current is actually the vector sum of these two. So, if you assume that these two are the two vectors then the total current will be of the vector ok and it would be making an angle of theta here and an angle of theta prime with respect to displacement axis right. So, what is this angle? This angle theta can be obtained by looking at what is tan theta. Tan theta is nothing but omega epsilon divided by. So, do not worry about this j. So, you just look at what is tan theta over here ok. For one second let me actually call this as theta and call this as theta prime. So, tan theta prime is omega epsilon by sigma because e electric field on both sides will actually cancel right. So, this uh, both sides will actually cancel ok or if you measure theta with respect to the displacement axis which is what more commonly is done then tan theta is given by sigma by omega epsilon ok. And this tan theta is what we call as loss tangent ok. Why is it called as loss tangent? If you look at two cases ok. In one case let me assume that the conduction current is very large ok and the displacement current is very small. Then the total current actually points very close to conduction current and theta is around pi by so, this would be the case when tan theta is getting very large right because theta is becoming pi by 2. So, therefore, tan theta is very large which means that there is complete loss because sigma is much high right. Then the propagation constant as you have seen attenuation constant as you have seen will depend mainly on this sigma and it would be very lossy situation ok. So, this is your conduction current and this is your displacement current ok. On the other hand if the material is a very good dielectric and having very little amount of conducting losses then that particular material will have no attenuation. So, this would be the electric field which is very close to this one and the angle theta will be very small implying that theta is small right. So, theta is approximately 0. So, in this particular case the wave will actually be propagating without any attenuation and this is a case where you do not have any loss or the loss is very small ok. So, depending on which one is larger you can actually con consider this as dielectric or as a conductor 